Okay, so uh, before we get started, um, you will have some resources uh, toward the end of the semester. Um, I will have my usual office hours during exam week. In fact, I'll play, I guess, a couple more because I actually physically won't be teaching classes. Um, Friday's not going to help you much, right? Because you've got your exam then, but I'll be in the other days. Um, there will also be uh, the math in will take place uh, Saturday after classes, right before finals week, uh, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. right here in this building. Uh, and there'll be signs up. It'll be obvious where to go. Um, this is a good opportunity to show up, kind of get things sort of fine-tuned on math and math type classes that you have. Uh, some of you may have more than one. Uh, so I encourage you to be there. I'll be there all day, uh, as will uh, a number of other folks can help you out. So mark that on your calendars. Also, don't forget the evaluations uh, before the end of the semester or before the, we take the exam. Any questions before we get rolling? Okay. And let me hit some high points about these things called finite fields. Okay, so we have these finite fields that are ZP, uh, but they're more than that. Um, Last time we discovered that any finite field had P to the N elements uh, using a little bit of math 3110, a little bit of linear algebra. Yeah. Finite field has P to the N elements. It is characteristic P. That means when you add the identity, or in particular, any element to itself, p times, you get zero. And it contains zp as a subtotal. And b, uh, if the finite fill has p to the n elements, then element of f is a root of the polynomial x to the p to the n process. Now notice that this polynomial, uh, and this of course is over ZP. So these coefficients are in ZP. So notice that the degree of this polynomial is P to the N, and I would expect a polynomial of degree P to the N to have P to the N roots somewhere. Uh, and this actually has P to the N different roots. Let me, uh, let me uh, sort of explain why this is true. How many of you have ever seen somebody make the mistake of writing x plus y squared is x squared plus y squared? Anybody seen that? You have to explain that to your friends. Oh, that's a big mistake. However, in characteristic two, they are correct. 
You probably should just correct it. They'll say that's okay in characteristic two. That's, that's going to send them further down the rabbit hole. Why, why is this true? Well, this is kind of good exercise in the binomial theorem. Uh, actually, before I do this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a claim. Um, I think we've had this before, but it's not going to hurt me to show you again. Then, I'm going to go code. This is not true for P not the prime number, but what is true is the binomial coefficient is divisible by and then, let me show you where the, let me kind of give you a quick example here. Notice the binomial coefficient here is two, which is divisible by two. Three. Middle terms in here, binomial coefficients are three, it's divisible by three. Good so far? It's true for five, check it for five. But let me point out that for four, this is not so warm and fuzzy anymore. Notice that the middle coefficients are not all divisible by four. So prime was important there. Let's see why this is true. Well, notice that P factorial over K factorial, P minus K factorial. I don't know much, but I do know it's a natural number, right? Because it is the multiplier that I get by multiplying that out. It has to be an integer. Everybody okay with that so far? And in fact, if you remember what this binomial coefficient is, this is also the number of ways you choose a k element subset from a set of pieces. Set. So it's got to be an integer. Everybody okay so far? Now, why is this why is this integer divisible by p? Well, let me point out that p factorial is m times k factorial. Times P minus K. Am I agreeing? Let me write this out with a little bit more of a dramatic flair. K, K minus one, K minus two, three. One times P minus K, P minus K minus one. And this also cascades down. Everybody okay so far? That's just my dramatic flair for writing this down. Now, notice, everybody agree that P divides the left side of that equation, right? So there's a factor of P on the left side. So there has to be a factor of P on the right side, but P is prime. Here's where prime is important. And what does it mean to be prime? When it divides a product of things, it has to divide one of the elements of the product, right? Um, Can P divide K? Huh? No, 
because k is too small. Uh, actually, that should be less than p. My bad. K is less than p, so p can't divide k. Same with k minus one. It's getting worse. It's getting worse, isn't it? Right? So there's no way p divides anything in here, so it doesn't divide this. Can p divide p minus k? Well, no, because k is at least one, right? So you've taken at least one away from p, so this is at least one less than p, so p can't divide it. It can't divide that, and so forth and so on. That means that p must divide m. No choice, because it doesn't divide this, and it doesn't divide this, and it has to divide something in the product. The only thing left over is m, so it has to divide that. Everybody okay so far? Now, let me prove this is, this little theorem is often called freshman's dream, uh, mod p, emphasize. That's just the binomial theorem. Now I'm going to pull out and hold separately x to the p, y to the p, and in the middle here, I'm going to sum k equal one to p minus one of p k. Right, so I pull off the two tails, the biggest term corresponding to k equals zero, and the smallest term corresponding to k equals p right here. And then in the middle, I've got this. Everybody okay with that? And notice this is divisible by p by my claim. That means all these terms in the middle vanish. Because we're in characteristic P. So when you add any multiple of P things to itself, it's zero. Oh, I see. Okay. Now let's go a step further. Basically, I just did this for n equals one, right? This looks like induction to me. Everybody okay with that? We've already shown that x plus y to the p is equivalent to x, uh, x to the p plus y to the p. Suppose for some m you know, greater than one x plus y m plus y now I've got to go now I've got to do the induction and show that I can do it for m plus one. This is a good example where induction is, is fairly easy. Let's see what this is. Well, am 
Everybody agree with that? If I look at x plus y to the p to the m plus one power, this is x plus y to the pm power to the p power. Now, by induction, I have that this is plus <laughs> but I've already done the case for the just the p power, right? I went through all that trouble for what we did before. This is x to the p to the m in power. In power. Because we've already done this is basically the base case. And so actually this formula holds in general. Again, you need characteristic P for this stuff. Now, I did all this so I can show you that if you collect all the roots of uh, X to the P minus X, X to the P to the N minus X equals zero, you get a finite field. Now, I'm playing a little bit fast and loose with you in the following sense. Number one, I'm going to assume that these roots are all different. They are. We need a little bit more mathematics to do this, but the roots are all different. And number two, I'm assuming that they exist. You can show that, that at least P of them exist in Z mod P. Okay, so suppose I have two roots. Uh, so we get a to the p to the m uh, equals a and p to the p to the m n. That's what it means to be roots. It means that x to the p to the n is equal to x, right? Because this difference equals zero, right? So if you look at a plus b, this is a to the p to the n, p to the p. Which is a plus p. How about that? So a plus b also know. Minus a p to the n is minus one to the p to the n, a to the p to the n. Right, right. Right, and this is minus one times a minus a. There we go. So minus a is right. How do you know that uh, negative one equals negative one? That is a great question. How do we know that? Two cases. And actually, she's absolutely right to click on them. Case one, P is an odd prime. Then no problem, right? Because odd. Case two, P is two. 
then this is plus one. But in characteristic two, plus one and minus one are the same, right? So I, I almost got burned, but I just got away with it, right? Because actually for the even case, minus and plus are the same. Also note, way, I say if A is not zero, because I'm building up to something, but let me point out that zero to the P of the N equals zero. So zero is also a root of this. But suppose I have some non-zero root of this, divide by A, and I have a to the p to the n minus one equals one. I clear, I, I, actually, I should go through a little bit more uh, business with, okay, it's not a zero divisor or whatever, but this is a to the p to the n minus two times a. And this is a inverse. So, yeah. Because every non zero element has an inverse. Because a to the p to the n minus one power is one, which means a to the p to the n minus two is the inverse value. How do we know that a to the p to the n minus one is the inverse? Uh, just uh, subtracting the powers. Okay. Right. So, and, and you might worry a little bit. This is circular. I am, I am sort of demon. This is really a demonstration and not a proof because really I'm assuming the inverse just to get to this step, right? However, you can go through something more rigorous. You can uh, factor this out. Uh, well, you can actually use a zero divide argument like we did earlier to show that any finite ring, uh, every element is either a unit or a zero divide. <laughs> Yeah, in fact, I can make the proof better that way. I know that it's a finite field since it's a finite ring, and or I, I know that the yeah, this collection of roots is a finite ring, and so that has to be again. Last time I gave you a couple of concrete examples. Let me let me do let me do a couple more. We'll do nine elements and eight elements. Notice nine and eight are both powers of primes. So my field of nine elements, I know that nine is three squared. So that means it's gonna be characteristic three uh, and it must contain Z3. Uh, if you're curious what this means is I'm looking, the two signifies that I'm looking for an irreducible quadratic polynomial of Z3. Let's try some stuff. So what, actually, let me consider the quadratic polynomial. I'm going to do an x8 and then x squared. Now, I want to convince myself that this is actually irreducible over uh, z3. Let's try to plug in stuff. If I plug in 0, I get negative 1, Three. So 0 is not real. If I plug in 1, I get Zero minus one, I get negative one. Uh, so one's not real. If I plug in two bar, you have four minus two is two minus one is one, still not a root. So this is irreducible. Degree two. So let omega be a root of this. So I have some equations here. I have omega squared minus omega minus omega zero, which means conveniently. Omega squared is omega plus one. The difference between this example and 
the example that I did last time with the field of four elements is now plus one and minus one are actually different. Um, plus one is one and minus one is the same thing as two, right? And notice I'm characteristic three. So if I add anything to itself three times in a row, you get zero. So what do the elements of this field look like? Well, there's nine of them. And there's the little Z2, there's the little Z3 that it contains. Now let's see, I can add omega to the, all of these. And I can add two omega to all of these. Notice that, let me, let me work on this equation as well. Omega squared minus omega is one. That means omega times omega minus one is one. Uh, and omega minus one is the same thing as omega plus two. So, These two should probably be inverses of each other. Omega and omega plus two. Their product equals one. That's right. Um, how do you add things in here? Uh, Connor, pick two of these. Don't pick, don't pick zero. What happens when I add these two? What do I get? That's a good choice. These two are inverses of each other, additive inverses. Uh, what happens when I take omega plus one and square? Well, what is omega squared? Hmm. It's omega plus one. So this is three omega, which is here. This is two. Anybody want to guess what the inverse of omega plus one is? I'll give you a hint. When I took omega plus one times omega plus one, I got negative one. So it's almost the inverse. Anybody, so can anybody guess what's the inverse of omega plus one? I guess it should be minus omega plus one. So that should be minus omega, my, minus omega minus one. So it should be two omega plus two. Let's check it. going to be two omega squared plus two four uh, four omega plus two. Anybody heard of that? So this is two times omega plus one. This is two omega plus two plus four omega plus two, which is six omega plus four. Now you reduce this mod three, that's zero, and so that's one. Why is this plug in one uh, omega plus one for omega squared? Like I understand why they're equal to there, but why can't, if we know that omega is a root, why is like Omega squared, not also a root. Uh, actually, 
omega squared is the roots of this are, are, are omega and omega plus one, aren't they? Let's see, the roots of this are omega, and the other root is right, so that would be omega four. So omega squared is yeah, yeah, omega. But see, it's just the form of which you write it. So I did this. So here's the reason. Here's the reason I did this. Zero, one, two. Notice that you never have an exponent of omega tired than one. And this is an organized way that I've written down the nine L. Zero, one, two. Then omega plus zero, one, two. Then two omega, zero, one, two, like that. Now, if I want to go through willy nilly and say, well, this one's really omega squared, and this one is omega squared plus one. Well, I could certainly do that, but I've just chosen to write it in this form to keep the power flow. But omega squared is an honest to goodness bona fide element of this, this field. It's certainly there. So any power of omega that you want, right? It's just you can also write them in those lower power forms. And in fact, this equation, what's also true is x to the ninth minus x. Uh, well, x to the ninth equals x. For everything in that, in that, if you take the ninth power, you will get back. And there'll be one element that you really do have to pick the ninth power. Um, let me show you if this is true. Um, let's just look at, uh, uh, yeah, let's do something a little bit more fun. Let's look at omega plus one to the ninth power. Now, I'd rather not do this per se because that's this is really obnoxious. So let's do this. Let's break it down into usable steps. So I can do it this way, right? And at least this way I can do it kind of a chance. Now, what's the beauty of what I've done here? Uh, what simplification can I, I do now? What's true about three omega squared and three omega? Remember, I'm characteristic three, so these two are gone. Agree? So this is actually. A little bit better. Now, before I go on here, I mean, somebody keeps getting out of hand. Let me recall, so let's take an aside here. Omega squared is omega plus one, right? So I'm going to use this to reduce things. So omega cubed is omega squared plus omega. Right? And again, I'm going to go back to the well here. This is omega plus one plus omega, which is two omega plus one. So now I'm going to use this omega cubed back in the right place, two omega plus one. And now, conveniently for me, I have to deal with lower powers. When I cube this, this is eight omega cubed plus uh, 12 omega squared plus six omega plus one. Now notice again, the 12 and the six are gone because they're multiples of three. So this is eight omega cubed plus one. But I know what omega cubed is, it's two omega plus one. So this is eight times two omega plus one, because omega cubed is two omega plus one. So this is 16 omega plus eight plus 
one. Uh, let's see where I'll probably screw this up. Because 16 omega is omega. Omega plus one cubed, cubed, but then I seem to have done this right. This is omega cubed plus one. Uh, omega squared. So that's omega cubed is omega squared plus one, which is two omega plus one. That's right. Oh. Do y'all see what my mistake is? Omega cubed. I need to add another one. I need to add another one. So let's let's fix that. Omega cubed plus one cubed is two omega plus one plus one cubed. So this is two omega plus two here. And we're hoping for better fortune now. This is eight omega cubed plus uh, four, eight, and four omega squared plus 24 omega plus 8. Yes? Sorry, this is a dumb question. But why is omega cubed? Why is omega cubed equal what? 2 omega plus 1. You okay with that? Oh, wait, okay. I'm sorry. So, so are you with? Are you with me now? Yes. So omega squared just multiply both sides by omega, and then replace this again with omega plus sign. Okay. Everybody okay? Again, these are multiples of three, and they're gone. And so this is eight omega cubed plus eight, which is eight times two omega plus one plus eight. So this is four omega plus 10. Mod three, this is omega plus one. So notice when we took the ninth power of this, we got back to it. And this will be true actually of any element in this. Why is it two times two omega plus one? Because this. But why is it not like eight times? Oh, it is, but you'll get the same answer, okay. right? Because eight and two, <laughs> right. I screwed up yet again, but the, the, the screw up I did wasn't a screw up. I mean, it really was a screw up, but it wasn't because the difference in eight and two are equivalent mod three, right? So you'll get the, the same thing. This is 16 omega plus 16. Okay, so let's look quickly at one more. What if we have the field of eight elements? I'm gonna start this one from just the point of view of all roots of polynomial. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to factor this thing uh, over Z2. Well, I know I can pull out an X for sure. All right. 
Now notice that if I plug in x equals one to that factor on the right, I get zero. That means that right factor has to have a factor of x minus one. By the way, since this is a field of eight elements, eight is two cubed, so its characteristic is two. So I could have written x plus one. There's no distinction between plus or minus. And that. And that looks like a doozy, doesn't it? Right, a six degree polynomial. However, this factor is this way, as a matter of fact. Uh, let me justify that for you on a little side here by going backwards. Let me just get on my horse and ride and multiply this out. X6. There's only one way to get a five degree term, and that's by multiplying these two. Let's see, how can I get an X fourth term? X cubed, uh, nothing works here. Oh, I can get x times x cubed, and that's it. So I get x four. How many ways can I get an x cubed term? Well, I can get it this way. I can get it this way, and I can actually get it this way. There's actually three ways to do it. I agree. So I get three x cubed here. Uh, let's look at x squared. How many ways can I get the x squared term? Well, I can get a one times x squared, but nothing else here works. So there's just one of those. How many ways to get an x term? Just one. And how many ways to get the x term? Just one. Now, although that may look different at first blush, Notice that three and one are the same thing because you're mod two, right? Two x cubed is zero. And so that's just the same thing as x cubed. Do I hear that? Right? Now, what I want to point out about these two cubics is if that cubic can be reduced, if you can reduce a cubic polynomial, it either breaks into three linear polynomials or a linear and a quadratic. Everybody agree with that? If you can break it down, it either is three linears or a linear and a quadratic. So in either case, it has to have a linear factor. It has to have a three one factor, which means that it would have to have a root in Z2. Notice if I plug in zero to this, I get one. If I plug in one bar to this, I get three, which is one. So no root here. Same here. If I plug in zero, I get one. If I plug in one, I get three, which is one. No root there. These things don't have a linear factor. They can't break down. So these are irreducible polynomials. So uh, I'll just pick the first one. So I get omega cubed. I get omega cubed omega plus one. So let me write down the elements of this field. Uh, there's eight elements of this field. They are zero, one. They are omega and omega plus one. They're omega squared. Uh, right. So it's got zero, one, uh, omega, omega plus one. I, I guess this is the best way to do it. Omega, omega squared plus one, omega squared plus omega, and uh, omega squared plus omega plus one. Why is omega 
omega is equal to omega plus one and not oh well it could be negative omega minus one but right uh, because again that i'm making no distinction between the signs okay. of the characteristics yes why do we take mod two for this scenario well because whenever you have a field with p to the n elements p is your characteristic Right. So, for example, if I walked up to you, I said, okay, we've got a field of 49 elements, then it would be mod seven would be what would be going on. Other questions? Yes, sir. Um, and you get the same sort of rule going on here. So, for example, what happens when you take uh, omega squared plus omega and square it? Is omega four plus two omega cube plus omega squared. Now to figure out what this is, I have to use this equation again. Let me point out that omega four is omega squared plus omega. Right. And I guess I'll leave to omega four here. So this is omega squared plus omega, there's your omega four, plus two, oh, well, two is zero. There we go. So this is actually omega. So if you square this one, you get that. There is another obvious question I'm waiting for you to write. Yes, Sam. So if you would have chose the, the other quadratic, would you get the same answer? <laughs> you would get a different relationship, right? Because if you chose the other one, what you would get is, where are you, other one? You would get omega squared is omega squared plus one, right? Instead of omega plus one, it would be omega squared plus one. But you would actually get the same field, right? Um, this omega is a root of this polynomial. If you chose a different one, it will be a root of a different polynomial. However, in here somewhere, uh, you should be able to find uh, that root. So see if you can do it. So in other words, in here somewhere, is a root of that. Right, this one is the root of and by the way, there will be two more of these, and there will be three roots of this. Right? So there are going to be three roots. So this is the way it breaks down. So I'm probably no middle. Let me remind you. Let's take this apart. We need a root of x. There it is. We need a root of x minus 1. There it is. You got three roots here. You got three roots here. And there's six things left. The only thing I know is this one is a root of this. But I promise you, of these other five, two of them are roots to this. And the other two are roots to that one. Okay. And in fact, if you look at, let's see what happens to omega squared plus omega. Omega squared plus omega squared is omega, right? So omega squared plus omega cubed is omega squared plus omega squared times omega squared plus omega, but this we know is omega. So this is omega cubed omega squared. Right? 
and omega cubed is omega plus one plus omega squared. So let's see, let's see if we can figure out which one this, this is the root of. We have omega squared plus omega cubed is we have omega squared plus omega is omega. Right. Uh, can y'all figure out which one this is a root of? Notice if you call this X, notice that omega cubed plus omega What happens when I take this and add it to this? What happens to the omega squared plus omega? They die by equals one. So omega squared plus omega is another root of x cubed plus x plus one. So this one and this one are roots to this one. And there's one more in there. And the other three will actually be roots to the, the missing. And if you had started with this polynomial, then your omega will be a root of this one and go three and three the same. That's kind of an interesting one. But of course, count the roots, and that's what you get. There should be eight roots and you get eight things. So we're a little bit over. Any questions? The third one be omega squared. I'm sorry. Would the third group be omega squared. Uh, maybe. Uh, okay. If you guys got to get somewhere, that's fine. But he has the third group to omega squared. So let's figure it out. Squared is omega four. Omega four is omega squared plus omega. So if x is omega squared, then x squared is omega four, which is omega squared plus omega. X cubed is just this times this, which is omega squared times omega squared. Which is omega four plus omega cubed, which is omega squared plus omega plus omega plus one, which is omega squared plus one. So let me kind of line them up, see if it falls down. X cubed is equal to omega squared plus one, if I did this right. X squared is omega squared plus omega. Uh, X is omega squared. And you were correct because if you look at X cubed plus X, this plus this, then this equals one. So X cubed plus X. So it should be these three. These other three should be roots. Yep. Any questions? How did you choose omega squared is equal to x? Because he asked me to. He asked, is x the other, or he said, he okay. asked me, is omega squared the other root? And so we chose. So you start off by choosing one of the, like setting it equal to x, and then going from there to make it. Right. Okay. And notice. This times this is omega cubed, which is 
Yeah, so these were Other questions? All right, y'all have a good one, and we will see you next time.